Good afternoon, good day, good morning, as the case may be, wherever you are watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you will bear with me. To begin this uh, reading on the title, The Coronavirus Pandemic as a Wake-Up Call to Realize God's Heavenly Kingdom of freedom and love on earth, I propose some music, namely a song called Gypsy Scholar, which is my theme song and serves as an introduction to yours truly.
Now, that was recorded here about 10 years ago with an English producer named Luke Nyman. And on the 28th, rather the 29th of November last year, I played this song and three other ones for a few friends to celebrate my 80th birthday. You can um, visit uh, on my blog, the gypsy scholar dot blogs dot punch dot nl for the other three songs. I don't think it's to be found anymore on Facebook. It may be, but we're going to put it on on YouTube. Anyways, that was an introduction. It's about my discovery of anthroposophy and this whole lecture is actually also based on the, on, the, on, the, on the wonderful teachings and activities of Rudolf Steiner. It's mostly addressed to anthroposophists because I've made it known on various anthroposophy sites um, and it not only um, ties on in a sense to that birthday concert, but also to the last digital reading that I held, and that was on May 21st. And that all can also be seen on my Facebook, and will also be soon on my YouTube channel, Robert Keller. You go there, you'll find some, some more films. And that last lecture, digital-wise, uh, was entitled Reading of and Commentary on the Coronavirus Pandemic, Anthroposophical Perspectives by Judith von Halle. It's a little booklet that she wrote in German. The Coronavirus Pandemie Anthroposophische Gesichtspunkte, and it's being translated into English by the Honorable Frank Thomas Smith in Argentina. Uh, but I've read on the site Judith von Halle and Anthroposophy that it will only be available in July, which is uh, a little bit uh, far away. It's very, it's a very actual publication and it, it should be able to be uh, translated a little bit sooner, but who knows. Okay, now what has happened in the meantime is that Rudolf von Halle has written some more pages as an appendix to this booklet. Uh, of course, all are in, in German. It's called um, that's große Ablenkungsmanoeuvre, which means the great distraction. And so what is this distraction about? Well, I cannot read all these 15 pages, of course, and not, 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 not summarize them either. But I will, I have translated some passages which makes it clear what she's driving at. <coughs> she wrote these, these 15 pages in Berlin and uh, she, um, she signed it with her name of course and then the 4th or the 11th of May because it's, um, it's only 20, 20 days ago that she wrote this. And she has been viewing the various protests, movements, not only in Germany, but uh, actually uh, in the whole of Europe and also in, in America, against these coronavirus measures that have been laid upon the population uh, by the governments and the powers that be based on uh, various advices from virologists, quite one-sided because they left the views of philosophers, sociologists, and other medics um, uh, aside. 
And she noticed that there are all kinds of people coming together to protest against these measures. People from the left, people from the center, people from the right. And people find themselves in various um, strange bedfellows, you might say. And she, she finds this, these pr protests in as much as they are good, in any case, a distraction. And on page 126, after studying these, this image of all these various demonstrators, she says this. If one namely studies this image more closely, it will indicate that with all the courageous protest movements of today, be they protests regarding animal protection, climate change, or the corona measures, something frightful, something terrible is happening that is hidden, invisible, subtle and perfidious that takes a hold of the good intentions and ideals of thousands or even millions of people without them noticing it. The good intentions are thereby not at all diverted or misused for other goals. The perfidiousness exists to begin with in the fact that such well-meaning, justified, and necessary initiatives react against the resistance they must, they meet, what is to be expected, and basically also good. Only something of a really demonic nature threatens thereby, is threatening as if on the side, and exactly that is what is intended. Namely, what is intended? The wonderful and great enthusiasm that arises by these, by these movements, especially with the younger generation, as well as with the full attention by those engaged in them, is completely tied down in these movements, stuck to these movements, so that one thing surely does not come about. Double. And what is that? The awareness of the central of event of our times. The perception of the Christ being as an etheric appearance that is known among Christians all over the world, a second coming. But she calls it the Christ being that is revealing itself or has revealed itself in his etheric, not in his physical, in the flesh, but in the etheric, the realm lying above the physical. It's one of the tenets of anthroposophy, that there are various levels of reality, the physical, the etheric, the astral, and then the ego sphere comparing to the four kingdoms that we have on the earth compare with the physical we have the, the mineral realm the plant realm is the etheric and the astral realm is the realm of animals and the human kingdom is the kingdom of the eye the ego as freud says but we prefer to call it the eye ego has a kind of negative connotation and in my meeting, my reading um, on the 21st Ascension Day, I pointed out that what Judith van Halle considers to be the cause of the coronavirus, namely the materialistic principle of civilization that we are being, yeah, you might say, subdued by, met by, in other words, coronavirus is a, is a disease, a civilizational disease, 
and that the modern natural science and also the medical science, but actually all sciences derived from natural science, only accept the three kingdoms, lower ones, physical, etheric, and the astral, or the mineral, plant, and animal, and not the kingdom of the eye. And that is actually in the kingdom of the eye, the human kingdom, is the kingdom that Rudolf, that, that Rudolf Steiner pointed out, <coughs> Christ as the being who said of himself, I am the, I am brought down to earth and to humanity. Now, this is what Judith von Allah is pointing at, that all these movements, however courageous and justified and necessary they are, tie people down to the physical plane, and they do not rise above, above that and find ways to come to a realization of the awareness of Christ in the etheric. And I add, because she, as she says in her booklet, I opened some doors, I opened many doors, and I invite my readers to enter these doorways and inspect some of the rooms that lie there that I haven't had a chance to inspect myself because it's a very aphoristic little booklet, she says. She wrote it in three days. So this reading is also uh, uh, aphoristic in a double sense and only meant as a suggestion, as an impulse because I'm mentioning books, texts, and I will mention also the blogs where you can study these things in your free time. So um, I will now continue with this with these passages from her book. And then she says, and everything comes down to what is happening today on page 130. She also goes in to this question, controversial question of the secret brotherhoods behind the scenes that some people believe, some people don't. But she says, the problem with that is if you merely mention this without grounding this in facts, you will all only incre increase the fear that is also happening already by the coronavirus. So instead of taking that fear away, you add to it. But Rudolf Steiner spoke about these secret brotherhoods, not very often, but he certainly did in closed internal lectures. And she, she, she names a passage. Yes, those brotherhoods that want to ban the souls of human beings in the material sphere are intent on letting Christ pass by unnoticed in the 20th century, to let his coming as an etheric individuality go by unnoticed. They want instead, Judith von Holle says, and then she quotes Rudolf Steiner again, to place a different individuality that has not even once appeared in the flesh, such as Christ has, but an etheric individuality of a strong, strict, aromatic nature. Rudolf Steiner, uh, in the uh, lecture that's, that's um, called GA 178, Gesamtausgabe is, uh, is his work, 178. Now, what is meant here is Sorat, Judith von Hallet says, the sun demon whose third recalcitration is rebellion we experience since the end of the 20th century, we are standing in the middle of his activity. Now this sun demon is also called the Antichrist, of course. And Rudolf Steiner has pointed out his figure is calling a 666. And we have already had 
two periods in human history in the last 2,000 years, in the 666, when there was a, a heightening activity of the Sorat, and uh, two times 666, connection with the demise of the Templars by the, by the church. And now in 1998, when you have three times 66, we have an increased activity of this Sora. And he, um, Rudolf Steiner says, he's of a strong aromatic nature. Now, we have here to point out what is meant by aromatic nature. We have here the, on my right, the, the, the statue that Rudolf Steiner made in wood, it's standing in the attic, in the attic of the Gertianum, uh, where it should actually be on the, on the, on the, in the Great Hall, but that hasn't been done. Um, here you have this in the middle, the double middle, the Christ figure, representative of humanity. And you have here Ahriman, which at the sight of this being is, is, is held down to the earth. Christ doesn't 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 keep him down. He 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 comes down on his own accord. It's because of the great impulse, the great ebullience of this figure, that he also is able to make the other um, contradictory spirit, the Luciferic, crash down into the abyss. And so he's he is he is the double middle between two polarities. Now that is the anthroposophical terminology in the Bible. This is called Satan and Lucifer is called uh, the devil. But we will see that something happened to Lucifer at the crucifixion of Christ uh, during the mystery of Golgotha. Now that is the, the great distraction that she talks about. That we are distracting from the essential. And there is again a reference to the, what, what in my title comes, is included, namely the, the human kingdom which is nothing else than God's kingdom on earth, the fourth kingdom. She says on page 134, in that realm about the coming of which we pray in our Father, the world out of which our internal being stems, there are no bacteria or viruses. Human pathogenic bacteria and viruses are secretions of diseased and conflicting spirituality. They release poisons, physical, psychic, and spiritual poisons. Now, that is so far as I will go in this, in this booklet by Judith von Halle, especially concern her appendix. Now, I will now make a transition, but I will mention one more thing from a booklet by Judith von Hollow, which I already mentioned last time, and it's this booklet. In German, Krise und Chance, die Freie Hochschule und ihre Bedeutung für das Karma der Anthroposophischen Gesellschaft. Crisis and Opportunity, the Free School of Spiritual Science and its meaning, its significance for the karma of the Anthroposophical Society. And she says some quite troubled things here, as I mentioned last time. But I only mentioned two passages. What I didn't mention 
is something that I would like to develop further, in which she, in which she gives a very good introduction, gives me a chance to develop that. This is what she said or writes about the Christ impulse on page 51. For the Christ impulse is the connecting element between two polarities that are always trying to go out, out of each other's way, always trying to go in opposite directions. That, that places itself in a third, in a trin Trinitarian third in the middle, and which connects these polarities. So that a, a trinity, a, a threefoldness arises. So that the streams that are divided from each other can come together in the human beings through the wake to, to the awakened Christ consciousness. Now, a little, little bit later she says, this principle of the connection of two polarities, as has been written here, described, was always the, 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 the concern of Rudolf Steiner in the esoteric sh school which he, which, he, uh, which he founded, in his teachings and also in the cultic loja services in the, in the sphere of actions. Now, that she gives here the principle <coughs> of the Christ, namely the connection connecting element between two polarities and you find this here in the representative of humanity but you also find it and now we go to the to the to the second great spiritual figure that I want to talk about again and that is Herbert Witzemann When I went to America in from the turn of the millennium, I published this little booklet called The Principles of the Anthroposophical Society as a Basis of Life and Path of Training. It's online. Online. With this link http charter of humanity dot blog blogspot dot nl i will come back to that now why does this tie on to this uh, this christ principle by judith van halle that is because this Christ principle <coughs> has become materialized, you might even say, in the constitution of the anthroposophical society. And this has to be really realized. This is very, very important. Why is it important? Because when Rudolf Steiner, I mentioned this also last time, I repeat, after Rudolf Steiner had led the refoundation of the Anthroposophical Society at the Christmas Conference in 1923 in Dornach, with about seven, eight hundred people. He said, rather he wrote, the first thing that he wrote 
in the member's newsletter. <coughs> The Anthroposophical Society that we just refounded at the Christmas conference was intended to be the forum that the Anthroposophical movement requires for its practice. And with Anthroposophical movement, he meant nothing else than the new Christianity. He says this in a lecture in Arnhem in Holland here, 18th of July 1924, where he talks about this super sensible spiritual college that Archangel Michael led to the anthroposophical souls that were about to come down to earth they were given a kind of a, a foreshadow, a foreplay of anthroposophy. Of, and, he, and he called this the, 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 the anthroposophical movement. The anthroposophical movement is actually nothing else than the, than the substance, the powers, that the spiritual hierarchies under the leadership of Michael, Michael, developed, showed to the anthroposophical seals, and that they were supposed to come down to earth and spread over the whole globe, the whole earth. <coughs> and the form for this was the constitution of the anthroposophical society. Thus, the anthroposophical society constitution is founded on this Christ principle and that is what Herbert Witzemann has discovered. He, 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 he even put it into a diagram. I made this here, I made it visible. Charter of Humanity Herbert Witzemann. You have here the, the um, A link and then you have this corona you might even say you have this corona and you have a, a contradiction here you have on, on top you have spirit beholding and in the middle, spirit contemplating, or spirit mindfulness, as, as it's been translated now, and spirit remembering. And you have, on the top, you have these four articles. They refer, they refer to the four paragraphs of the 15 statutes that are the form for this new Christianity. And then you have, at the bottom, also four paragraphs, 3, 7, 11, and 15. The above row refers to the spirit beholding. It's the spirit that is the reference to one of the verses of the, of the, of the meditation, uh, the, the Christmas foundation meditation. And the middle, the middle um, row, you have seven paragraphs, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, spirit contemplation. Now, these are the three verses of the Christmas Foundation, Rudolf Steiner's Meditation. And here you have, you see already this principle that Rudolf von Halle talked about. The Christ principle is embodied in this, con in this constitution. You have a polarity of spirit beholding, which is going out. It's a, 
it's a, the image that the anthroposophical society projects to the outside world and you have a spirit remembering which is a going inside a, a turn to the inside and this polarity between out and in has to be connected synthesized unified by a middle realm of organs and these seven organs refer to the general assembly to the organ of, of the society that are always twofold <coughs> now i need to have some water to keep my going As I said, I cannot do more than to refer to this great discovery that Herbert Winsemann made. He was a member of the council at, at Dornach, lived from 1905 to 1984, I believe. Or was it 1988, I think? 1988. And he was my teacher. And I've, I've tried to spread his work here in Holland, also in England and America. So, let me just read something from the introduction that I made here. Wrote this in Amsterdam in, on June 12th, 19... No. No, I wrote it. When did I, when, I, when did I write this? Amsterdam, May 1998 already. The Anthroposophical Society, of which Judith van Halle says in this crisis and opportunity, <coughs> is not only sick or diseased, but but, but dead. And the, the resurrection, the renewal of the anthroposophical society can be enacted on the basis of this research, but also on the basis of the writings of Valentin Tomberg, which I'm going to go into a little bit later. So I'm making big statements, big claims, but they would be useless if they weren't backed up by this writing and my meditation for so many years. <coughs> so what did I write in the beginning here? The Anthroposophical Society has played no role of great importance in the course of the 20th century. Whether this will change in the few years remaining before the end of the second millennium and beyond that in the coming 21st century will depend on whether the potential world historical significance of the principles of this society in their relation to the foundation stone meditation given by Rudolf Steiner at the end of the first quarter of our century are fully comprehended as embodying the archetype of social or organs and as such enacted, implemented. <coughs> I'm getting a sore throat. It's no coronavirus bothering me. Now, what certainly did not happen is that these principles, as they were called, because these, these, these statutes, 15 statutes that Rudolf Steiner um, presented to the uh, Christmas conference from uh, 1923, that were accepted with a few changes, were later called principles for reasons that I won't go into now. <clears throat> but they're important reasons. Maybe I will touch it at the end. 
Now this, all these these various introductions that are wrote are online. You can read them. But I will just read one passage to give a small impression of their potential significance. Because you must realize if this is really the form for the new Christianity that Rudolf Steiner formed, created with the Christmas conference, for which he says this new Christianity the true Christianity that will only be realized completely in the next cultural period, in somewhat in the middle of the fourth millennium. That places a, a great responsibility on the, on the ones that are supposed to realize this. Constitution, this form of the new Christianity. And maybe I will say it already now, just to, to make it even more dramatic in this, this book on the activity of Herbert Witzemann on the council in Dornach between 1963 and 1988, down, uh, until his death, he remained on his post, even though he he encountered many, many difficulties, this great, great spirit, uh, as did also Judith von Halle, as a matter of fact, and also Tomberg. All these three, these three great spirits, it seems to have a common heritage. They, they, they encountered difficulties from the, from the, um, from the council. Judith von Halle was even termed as not being an anthroposophist by a member of um, the council. Uh, a former member. Now, in this, in this, I mentioned it also in my last lecture. In this chapter, here you have a picture of Herbert Winsemann in his old age. This is the second volume, but in the third volume, Reto Sabodelli, Reto Andrea Sabodelli, makes a, a, a cogent, solid case that the work of this man, Herbert Witzemann, was not only a philosopher and a poet, but also a speaker, great speaker, writer, shows great similarities with the work of Alanus of Insulus. The, the spirit of Alanus of Insulus may be working in the work of Herbert Witzemann. <coughs> and we all know, of anthroposophists know, what Rudolf Steiner had a great admiration for Alanus of Insulus, the great Platonic teachers of the School of Art, of the School of Chartres. But Reto Savodelli in this book places a tragic note by this constitution of the, the new Christianity because he says in this chapter, he not only says it, but he shows it. With great acumen, great, uh, great, also based on his own experience. In this chapter, which is called The gradual loss of the social aesthetic qualifi qualification of the anthroposophical society, in which he says that of these 15 statutes, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14 have been annulled, put out of action, and also 5, 9, and 13, which means six of the 15 are no longer actual, are no longer functional. And you have here this, I mentioned it before, 
Why is this significant also for the world? Because you hear you have these contradictions. Estrangement from the world, world knowledge. Alienation from the world. These statutes and the foundation stone meditation together are an aid, are a, a means of combating the alienation from the world that people have, many people have, are alienated. But people are also alienated from themselves in the spirit contemplating. Uh, this verse especially dealing with the Christ because these three uh, meditations, these verses are directed to the, the human soul but also to, to God the Father, God the Son and God the, the, the Holy Spirit. This spirit contemplation uh, is, a, is a, a middle to overcome the self-alienation. And here the spirit remembering, which is directed to, to, the, to the, the God, the, the Father, can overcome the human alienation and can lead to human knowledge. So these are, again, very, very... Yeah, uh, bold statements, but they are grounded in, in not only this booklet, but also another booklet, which you can also uh, read online, and it's called To Create or Administrate, Rudolf Steiner's Social Organics, A Principle of Civilization. Now, I've also written myself something on this, this little booklet here. Rudolf Steiner's idea of social organics, a new constitutional principle of civilization, based on a lecture I held at a university in Moscow in 19, uh, rather, 20, 20, uh, 2017, I think it was. Rudolf Steiner uh, never used his word social organics, um, but uh, it's a word that Abbot Witzemann coined for the idea of the threefold social order, the idea of the threefold social organism. And the reasons for that, which I explain in this booklet, perhaps it would be too much to go into that now, because I still want to also include some of the writings of Valerie Tomberg from his book Christ and Sophia on the occasion of this very day, this well, Whitson Sunday. I haven't really talked about it yet, but it'll come. Now, So, to go back now to this booklet on the principles of the Anthroposophical Society, which I, the last introduction I wrote in Ghent, in upstate New York, where that, at that time the um, Anthroposophical Library was located, I think it's in, in, in Dearborn, Michigan now, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Anyways, uh, the year, I think it was the year, year 2001. Now, this is what Abbot Witzemann says in his booklet on page 40 about this, this very arrangement here of this corona arrangement, to use that word, much abused word, corona, in a better sense, a crown. This crown can dethrone the, um, 
the so-called mixed king at the Gaudianum. The mixed king of the Gaudianum, because these 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 fifteen statutes weren't only uh, weren't only annulled or taken out of action, put out of action, but they were replaced by commercial statutes belonging to the renamed Gaudianum building. It's part of the whole constitutional question that still hasn't been solved and that I've been trying to solve for the last 20 years will again try to enter a motion in the coming General Assembly which was postponed because of the Corona crisis in, in October and also there are attempts being made by a constitution group of three leading anthroposophists and I've been invited to hold a pitch there also myself. But anyways, this arrangement, this corona arrangement, says Witzemann, and I read now, can be regarded from the viewpoint that the principles are intended to be the form and expression of the life of a free community. Such a free society bears witness in a modern sense to itself and to the world through the already indicated unity of the outer and the inner. The outer, the motives, the goals of a society, and the inner. These, these are the inner. They're all only people there. Uh, in the sense of the philosophy of freedom, a, a, an action is a synthesis of motive and driving force and here and it is connected by the ego the human eye here you need these organs to connect the goals of a society with the uh, uh, that the people want to realize in other words this is this constitutional this is an archetype of social formation it it, it suits every modern society that wants to be on the on the height of the the consciousness soul, the present uh, soul condition of, 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 of modern humanity. Yeah, he says, give, they, give, they, they are intended to be the form and expression of the life of a free community. And the human kingdom is a kingdom of freedom and love. And Rudolf Steiner, and this is another insight that I've had. I've never read this before anywhere else. And people might wonder, yeah, well, how, to, how in heaven's name did you, did you come to that? Well, I came to that through the readings of uh, Valentin Tomber. But Rudolf Steiner says in his last article on the nature and subnature that in the supernature that we are supposed to realize through the cognition and, and application of anthroposophical knowledge these beings have no more influence and, as, and when Judith van Halle says in this realm of God the Father no, there are no more bacteria and viruses and she means malicious viruses of course you need you need uh, 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 they're also good bacteria. Um, this is what this is actually what Rudolf Steiner said, and uh, or corroborated, and it makes sense because in in God's kingdom of freedom and love, there is no hate and coercion, but it's a far far off goal. But we have to strive for it already now. Okay, such a free society bears witness in a modern sense to itself and to the world. Yeah, I read that. Rudolf Steiner also spoke of the meaning of this unity in connection with the new way of designing artistic forms out of which the Gerdianum building arose. Had the Gerdianum been built in styles corresponding to artistic formative forces of earlier eras, the anthroposophical society would be, as Rudolf Steiner expressed it, 
have manifested itself as a sect. Only a community that out of its inner life develops its modes of expression is a free and modern one because it presents itself out of its creative inner origin to the world by the evidence of its deeds. In an architectural shell adopted from external sources, such a community could only lead an aloof and isolated existence. Impotence in architectural design would therefore be indicative of an even greater disability. Building a free community is a question of style. It is a question of styling, of artistic steadfastness and social aesthetic security in design. How? Equally untouched by sectarian and fanatical refusal on the one hand, that is Lucifer, if you go too far out, yeah, or too far in, you, you, you get way, way down, you get laid off. And by political collaboration, the other, that is if you go too far into politics, you get enmeshed in this power play, the, the, the aromatic things. A community shows itself in its positive self representation and defensive de delineation to be what it is. That's the first paragraph. If a free community evolving its own style in this fashion is to organize and manifest itself through the spirit-like penetration of the outer with the inner, it needs a center connecting both these polarities. Remember what Judith van Halle said, Christ impulse connection of polarities. This center, in as far as it is a true center, relates to these polarities as a rhythmically changing transition, which itself provides. This allows the center to become a kind of organ of perception for the connection between the polarities as well as for their differences and the course of their evolving union. So it's not only a question of connecting the polarities, but also perceiving their differences in the course of their evolving union. The double-faced middle, a double face, double in a good sense. Now, a free community can neither be a corporate body nor a personified organization. It can only manifest itself as the super personal reality of a common free consciousness such as can be formed in a knowledge community that is aware of an experiential free play zone between the spiritual and the sense worlds. In other words, this human kingdom, the kingdom of God, of the, of the tenth hierarchy of the human being, is not in the spiritual world and it's also not in the physical world. It's in between, in the soul world. And that's why Rudolf Steiner addressed these foundation stone meditation to the soul of man. And that is why, and that will I will I will back this up with a reading from Tom Berg on his book Christ and Sophia. That is my my conviction that Rudolf Steiner, with the Christmas conference, intended to give a contribution. To the realization of this kingdom, this heavenly kingdom of God. But here you have it. Here you have the another, somewhat almost like a technical manual. So you have this 
You need this triad. You need, you need, uh, Witzemann called this the countercurrent principle. You have a, you have a, a movement from, 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 from the, from outside to in and from inside to out. And you meet in the middle. And this constitutes a spiritual aura, a spiritual vortex in which then this anthroposophia, this new Christianity that was prepared in the spiritual can, can connect with, can incarnate on earth. And these statutes are an ideational image of this representative humanity, polarity between uh, two polarities connected by a, or, or separated by a, a double middle. Here you have it. <clears throat> a free, ex uh, experiential free play zone between the spiritual and the sense worlds. Superpersonality hereby does not mean extinction of individual consciousness and autonomy in a reality of a different sort. It is, on the contrary, the common consciousness within the same striving for knowledge by associates becoming aware of the presence of a universal spirituality that is, although equal, only to be fathomed individually in the way that this is realized in every individually enacted experience of a spiritual content. This is a this is a Whitson of Pentecost event. This is this is the the, 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 the key work by Herbert Winsemann to changing the Christmas conference into a Pentecost conference, in which we when we reorganize, restore these damaged statutes, restore the anthroposophical society separated from this commercial Gertianum building association, which has an existence for its own right. And then in this restored anthroposophical society, then again, that what was, which was attended by Rudolf Steiner can happen, namely this Pentecost revival for the benefit of all humanity. And not only in, in Donach, in Switzerland, but all the various individual societies, of which there are some 50 over the whole, over the whole earth, they all need to, to realign their constitution with the constitution of the mother society. Actually, all the anthroposophical national societies are orphans here in, in Holland, society in, 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 in Netherlands, but everywhere, because the mother society has been, yeah, taken in, has been usurped also, you might say, by this commercial entity of the Gertian, by with, with statutes, with bylaws that are in no way equivalent in harmony with the spirit of the Christmas Foundation. I try to keep my uh, bearing until I stop at, at, at 7. At my, at my time, 7.30. Now, this is the last paragraph. Such a unity of the esoteric and the exoteric, of the universal and the particular, linked by a rhythmic center, a beating heart, a streaming breath, can only bring its full reality to bear in a community since the founding of Christianity. For only through the fact that the mystery concerning the incarnation of the spiritual and the transubstantiation of the physical in the course of life of a God become man has been made public, has it become possible that the inner and the outer mystery wisdom and public life can be manifestation of one and the same being 
these are very esoteric Christian sentences connected with an organizational structure that Rudolf Steiner said in his lecture, his only lecture on Manichaeism on November 11, 1904, that true Christianity for the next period will have to be created, the form of it, by Mani and his disciples. And Mani's spirituality, his method is the, exactly the same method that Rudolf Steiner used for his philosophy of spiritual activity, philosophy of freedom, and that Herbert Witzemann used in his research for this and the other one essay that I mentioned to create or administrate, namely introspection, soul observation, no dogmatic sayings, but things that you can observe in your own consciousness and either can or not observe. Okay. But the, the fact that the outer and the inner can become one has only been made possible through the, through the, through the mystery of Golgotha. God, a spiritual being, high spiritual being, incarnating in a physical life, a physical man, Jesus, at the baptism in, in the Jordan. And that's the birth of Christ the birth of Jesus Christ and his, that was not the birth, the, the, the conception, the actual birth was the, um, was, it was actually, what we'll see now and what comes next, the, um, the, the Whitson, Pinkster mystery. Pinkster is Dutch, no, the Pentecost. Let me just finish this. Now then another one, another great sentence. Listen to this. Hence for every modern community, creating in free individual wakefulness, the style of its outer appearance is a Christian one. It cannot by solemn vow be bound according to plan, program or dogma onto principles of its existence, but only be called upon and encouraged to become ever more aware of its never-ending task of progressive self-realization. For that reason, the principles of a truly modern society, in that it is Christian, must possess dynamic rhythmic charisma. Now, if that isn't great, great thinking, inspiring thought, then I don't know what is. A genuinely modern society will thus appear in a threefold form as a rhythmic union between two polarities through a center. This threefoldness is the outer appearance of the principles. This threefoldness and the outer appearance of the principles become visible the moment one understands what the row of numbers in a zigzag line in a crown line indicates. Now, I invite you to keep on reading uh, in the link that is provided online here. HTTP Charter of Humanity dot blogspot dot NL. Now we have some time now. I'll maybe make some time. come to the actual occasion for this uh, this reading namely the Whitson Whitsuntide and for that I will read two passages out of this from this book Christ and Sophia I translated this book into, into Dutch 
tomorrow I will I will give a reading in Dutch and I can refer to the link I cannot refer to a link because these readings this these chapters by Valentin Tombak are not online but you can buy the book I think it's still available it's published by Steiner Books Christ and Sophia Anthroposophical Meditations on the Old Testament New Testament and Apocalypse Steiner Books 200, 2006 contains the meditations on the Old Testament New Testament and the Apocalypse now Valentin Thomberg lived in Amsterdam here from 1939-1944 and after that he went to to Germany and then settled down in England and I'm trying to um, see if we cannot somehow honor this man this this Amsterdammer by putting up a plaque where he lived he lived not too far from where I was living myself during the uh, during the war here in, in, in Amsterdam and he wrote um, the last chapter I think in um, in Amsterdam and also the appendix the four sacrifices of Christ and the reappearance of Christ in the etheric that exactly that what what Judith von Haller was saying that all these protests justified as they may be are distracting people from becoming aware of perception of the reappearance of the Christ in the, in the etheric, but also from helping to realize this God's kingdom on earth by exactly what I, I tried to explain here by restoring the statutes and implementing them, not only uh, in, in Switzerland, in the general anthroposophical society, but Oh, and in the lands, wherever you are, if you're in, in Spain, there's an anthroposophical society. If you're in America, there is one. In Japan, there is one. Sweden, Norway, uh, France, England. There you can help to get the anthroposophical society back on the rails. Even resurrected, resuscitated, based on this on this on this research but also based on what Valentin Thomberg has to say now in the second chapter the effects of temptation in the wilderness um, in the New Testament meditations it's in this uh, third section the third paragraph called Christ's transformation of the outer consequence of the fall this is what he says about realize the kingdom of realizing the kingdom of God page 185 today if we do not wish to be content with a general impression but wish to form a realistic idea of the kingdom of God and the miracles of Jesus Christ, we may do so with the help of Rudolf Steiner's writings prior to its such an idea can become a window into spiritual reality. For example, after working through Steiner's mystics after modernism and gaining a clear view of the thought process and the threads with which he wove that picture we may wonder what he wanted to express through his picture of mysticism a central idea stated over and over in different ways in that work begins to emerge the sublime idea of the friendship of god little later this thought which shines from Steiner's book mystics after modernism had already been elaborated by him in his two parts of intuitive thinking as a spiritual path 
It's uh, one of his basic books, also called Philosophy of Spiritual Activity. Uh, Herbert Witzemer wrote a fantastic commentary on that, uh, which is uh, which you can find uh, online. It's called HTTP double, uh, uh, double, double points slash slash uh, uh, philosophy of spiritual time. I, I'll, you have to you have to go to my um, you have to have to go to my uh, uh, Facebook page. I'll, I'll put it there. There he. But that well, I can't. I can't do too, uh, read too much more. Otherwise, we cannot get to the the Witsen part. In in other words, I go a little further. We can say that the Finnish natural kingdoms are present. These three lower kingdoms, as well as the as well as the human kingdom, as it has manifested. Manifest. Yet another kingdom, not yet realized, the kingdom of God. So he actually says that these friends of God who existed in the 14th century, centered in Basel, on the Rhine in Switzerland, their mission was to realize God's kingdom on earth. And he on the basis of the free anthroposophical publications by Rudolf Steiner, Thomberg elaborates that this is the mission of humanity, the missions of the free human being. Because God did not finish his creation. He left it up to free human beings to be the to become the tenth hierarchy. Okay. Now then Having said this, we'll finally go to the last part of this um, reading. <coughs> and that is the last chapter in the Meditations on the New Testament, which is called the Pentecost. Actually, it's in, in, in German it's called the Pentecost event. Uh, the first chapter is called the Organ of the Pentecostal Revelation. And the, the Organ of the Pentecostal Revelation, that were the disciples within their, in their mid Sophia. Sophia. And in the second second chapter, Sophia and the Pentecost, Tom Berg includes this diagram. This diagram. On the top you have you have you have Christ Sophia. Christ was unified with Sophia in the intuitive realm. Then Sophia and Lucifer. Lucifer was redeemed, uh, would have Steiner said, and uh, Tomberg, Tomberg uh, uh, says this also, at the sight of the suffering of Christ, and he let this sphere of falsehood fall into bits so that the revelations of Sophia could come down and express to the disciples the life tableau of Christ which had been preserved. These three spheres, the intuition, inspiration, imagination, and flowed down to the circle of disciples uh, who were there by waking conscious. They formed the, the etheric heart of humanity. Now, these, this chapter can be read, uh, but you have here, you have here like a, a diagram of the Pentecostal event. And here, what I showed before, here you have a diagram of the future Pentecostal event when we 
transform the Christmas Foundation in a Pentecost event. When we finally realized what Rudolf Steiner wanted to do, intended to do, namely to realize the kingdom, heavenly kingdom of freedom and love. These two concepts, freedom and love, they're the basis for his philosophy of spiritual activity. Through that, we can remount again, we can undo the fall individually, but also collectively in this foreplay of the true Christianity, the sixth epoch. Now, now I have some 10 minutes to try to read this last, not the last chapter, but it's the third chapter, uh, called the Pentecost as the realization of the New Testament. Maybe if I go a few minutes late, you will excuse me considering the subject at hand. I mean, if I can last that long. In other words, in my my throat lasts that long. Okay. The theme of the Old Testament is the preparation and realization of the advent of Christ in the human body, which occurred, as I said, at the baptism by John in the River Jordan. The theme of the New Testament is the advent of Christ in the human eye. The new law is in fact no law but the formation of the essence of a free human eye. There you have the concept of freedom. This cannot happen unless the human eye absorbs the being that is the new law. In quotation marks, new law. This absorption must involve something that does not arise externally, but comes from the depths of the world in which the human eye is rooted. A plant receives its sap from the soil in which it is rooted, and likewise the being of the Christ impulse should enter the human eye from the soil in which the eye is rooted. This means to effect that in the disciples, that in the disciples is the essence of Christ's farewell speeches as recorded in chapter 8 to 17 of John's Gospel. The, the gist of what was said is this. I was with you as your master. Now I go to the Father so that I may be in you as the Father is in me. Consequently, the point was that the I being of Jesus Christ would pass into the I being of others. The I that lived in the one human form must find a way to the inner eye of others without encroaching in the slightest on the freedom of those other I beings. We find this way of spiritual union wonderfully elaborated in this book by Herbert Witzemann, based on indications of Rudolf Steiner, called The Virtues, the paintings by Jan de Kok. We have exhibitions going on. We can, we can even have exhibitions in other countries talk about this spiritual union through the virtues. Passing into the being of another eye is possible only through the sphere that is the primal cause and the original dwelling of the all human eye being, the realm of the Father. From the Father, all human eye, from the Father, all human eye being originated. 
and only from the farther realm can any influence be exercised within human eye that is in keeping with the principle of freedom that is why Christ had to take the path that leads by way of the father into the human eye outwardly this path was that of death inwardly however it meant complete union with the father the path of death led to the resurrection the father path however led to the Pentecost death and the father are two aspects of a single mystery similarly the resurrection and the Pentecost and the Pentecost were two aspects of the mystery of Golgotha indeed the resurrection was the victory over Ahriman in the body and the Pentecost was the victory over Lucifer in the soul the resurrection meant a resurrection of the body and the Pentecost meant a resurrection of the soul Pentecost was resurrection of the soul in the sense that it brought to life wisdom that had united with the soul the wisdom of Sophia soul life did not arise out of mere feelings but from powerful perceptions of the Christ mystery perceptions that arise from the deepest ground of the heart the real meaning of heart can be understood by studying the Pentecost the common understanding of heart the heart as the same relationship to the heart's experience of Pentecost as the moon does to the Sun the twilight of the heart's hopes and fears was replaced by the shining daylight of knowing love the imperturbable inner certainty that the Apostles possessed concerning the Christ mystery was not based on the authority of, of outer either either the outer or the inner senses but on their experience of the reality of love we had freedom and now we have love because the Apostles experienced this reality in their souls they also knew ways and means by which it had and would continue to influence the world they knew too that what they now felt in their souls was the same experience that lived in Jesus Christ when he preached the Sermon on the Mount and performed the healings they knew likewise that this force should live to the mystery of Golgotha in human beings and overcome loneliness and death Out of this experience the Apostles spoke to these bystanders and they all heard the disciples speak in their own language this was possible because in the Apostles speech the divisions brought about by Lucifer had been overcome because Lucifer was vanquished during Pentecost it was possible to speak in a way that was a kind of resurrection of original human speech resurrection of original human speech it was the risen and soul that spoke it was the risen soul that spoke it used the language not of divided nations but the language of the human soul to understand the nature of the Pentecostal language it is not enough to have a general idea of the victory over the divisions brought about by Lucifer the true nature of the process by which that new language became possible in the human organism must be comprehended in a concrete way this reminds us of can that Rudolf Steiner in these 15 statutes started off with the first one which is the, the most important general one 
which he, he wrote and which they were voted on and accepted. Anthroposophical Society is a union of people, a people's union that want to nurture life of soul in the individual as well as in human society on the basis of a real knowledge of, this, of, of the spirit. In other words, we don't have a United Nations, we have a United People, a People's Union. And that is why this Constitution of Society, tying on with what is said here, is not a constitution for a union of nations, but a union of individual people. That is the, the future course of humanity. Out of this experience, the apostles spoke to those bystanders, and they all heard the disciples speak in their own language. This was possible because in the apostles' speech, the divisions brought about by Lucifer had been overcome. Because Lucifer was vanquished during Pentecost, it was possible to speak in a way that was a kind of resurrection of original human speech. I read that. It was a risen soul that spoke. It used the language, not of divided nations, but the language of the human soul. Now, I read that also. To get a more distinct view of this process, we must begin with the fact that human beings share their outer existence with the mineral world, their organic life with the plant realm, plant kingdom, and their movement with the animal world, animal kingdom. Nonetheless, human beings are distinguished from those three kingdoms by having speech. The fourth externally manifested attribute. Through, the, through this attribute, another member, aside from the physical ether and astral bodies, is revealed in human beings, the I, this makes it possible for human beings not only to participate in physical existence by living and moving about, but also to speak. Although the, the human eye is the actual source of the speech faculty, the existence of language nonetheless depends on the body's threefold makeup. The astral body, the emotional body is needed to um, combine the predicative with the attributive, the verb with the adjective, the etheric body is needed to connect the verb with the substantive or noun, and finally the organs of the physical body are needed to make spoken language sound in the air. This speech impulse of the eye passes through these three members of the body to reveal itself as spoken language. In the process, it not only influences these bodies, but it is also influenced by them. By making it as far as the physical body, the impulse is greatly transformed. By the influence of the area of egoistic likes and dislikes, and by the unconscious likes and dislikes in this sphere that exercise a restrictive influence on speech. This restrictive influence then results in the speech impulse in the ether body that takes on a cultural or a national tendency, eventually expressed in the sounds of a certain language through the organs of the physical body. Now, he, Stomback is, is, is giving you a kind of almost technical, spiritual scientific insight in how this revelation of the tableau of Christ working on earth, in other words, a kind of a complete, yeah, book, a complete total tableau of all his actions and, 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 and healings, etc., that was preserved and that came down 
so there's fear of the falsehood so they so so they redeemed lucifer and sophia eh, down to the disciples how could they speak in a language that everybody understood let's try to explain this thus through the various languages the original purely human speech impulse became a one-sided and relative phenomenon this is because of lucifer's influence in the human organism if this influence is overcome however as it was for example at pentecost the speech impulse is freed from the restrictive influence of the organism to the degree that it is no longer forced to flow into the current of a single language rather it can move freely through the whole circle of human languages amazing it can move freely through the whole circle of human languages this means that the speech impulse of the human eye can contact the realm of influence governed by the whole circle of spirits of language the luciferic archangels to the extent that in it has first acquired the faculty of uniting with the sphere of influence governed by folk spirits the normal archangels in other words a cooperation between the luciferic archangels and the the, the, uh, the angels of language the, the the archangels that cause this division in language meaning that we cannot understand each other unless we learn the other language and they made a kind of uh, a, a, a cooperation with the the normal archangels the folk spirits the archangels that, that govern the various nations okay various folks it was just this union with the whole circle of archangels or folk spirits that the 12 apostles established at pentecost this was possible because it is the host of archangels that spreads the revelation of the christ mystery among all nations what formed the essence of the pentecost revelation for human consciousness is poured into the life of the nations by the archangels distributed according to the several parts or words since the pentecost it has been the task of archangels as folk spirits to direct the flow of the christ influence into the life of nations the sum of their activity is the full pentecostal revelation of the christ mystery as experienced by archangelic consciousness or as the sum of the 12 apostles knowledge of at pentecost is the full Pentecost of the Christ mystery as experienced by human consciousness. Hence, it was possible for the circle of apostles to unite with the circle of archangels. The Pentecostal revelation was an event, not just in human consciousness, but also in the consciousness of folk spirits. thus a circle was formed that received the apostolate the apostolate of christ then just as the earthly human circle formed around one being mary the, the circle of archangels enclosed one archangelic being sophia The circle of human beings below and the circle of the fire spirits archangels above together form the archetype of what is made real to human beings and nations by the new testament now 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 comes something very important everything is important but it's just even more it is the true archetype of the ecclesia the church whose task is to bind humankind 
as well as the beings of the spiritual hierarchies as a unity in Christ. The true archetype of the Ecclesia, the Church, whose task is to bind humankind as well as the beings of the spiritual hierarchies as a unity in Christ. True archetype of the, of the Church. This unity is not meant to come about by means of organizations and edicts, but through the living flame of Pentecostal revelations. The essence of Pentecostal revelations is not just a comprehensive, intensified knowledge of the Christ mystery, but also the genesis of an archetype of every true community through experience of that knowledge. Here you have the, the complement, the supplement to what Witzemann has elaborated, has cognized. Here Tomberg talking about the archetype of every true community through experience of that knowledge. Therefore you need both of these great spirits to come to a Pentecostal action of the resurgence of the anthroposophical society. I hope this is getting maybe a little clearer now. Now, now then in the next paragraph, he talks about how this has been distorted in the French Revolution. Yeah? Also in the church itself. Historically, the reality of the Pentecost was behind the idea of the church. That reality, though the impression of it gradually faded, became later the idea for a community of Christians that embraced, embraces all nations. So this idea of the church embracing all nations is a distorted idea of the archetype of a church. It sounds great. Archetype of all nations. No. There must be a binding, a connection between nations and archangels. Also what Rudolf Steiner talked about in his first paragraph. Nurturing the soul of humankind and the individual on the basis of a true knowledge of the spiritual world. You might even say something even very heretic. Anthroposophical society is sort of an archetype of a future Ecclesia, a future community. Church is nothing that nothing other than a community. The Pentecost was the real experience of freedom in world history. Freedom united with the fraternity of humble equality in face of the sublime, all embracing Christ mystery. Later in world history, however, that experience was no longer an idea but the distorted caricature disguised as that monstrous human catastrophe, the French Revolution. That revolution was just the opposite of the Pentecost, a community of human beings aware of their rights, le droit humain, gathered around the figure of glory. What, Maria, what, Mary, what Mary Sophia was for the Pentecost event became the imaginary figure of the glory for the French Revolution. And the complete silence that pervaded the souls of those disciples who had passed through emptiness and loneliness now became a glamorous demand for rights. We want our rights. A place of giving rights to the other. Now comes the last paragraph. And I'm already a quarter of an hour late, but it's so be it. The fact that the Pentecost became the object of both abstraction and distortion is simply an expression of its importance for the whole history of post-Christian times. The Pentecost reveals the true mission of the post-Christian period. Everything revolves around the understanding, preparation, and realization of that event as well as on the fading of its impression 
and the disguise and distortion of its outline. Because it is the mission of the fifth post-Atlantean epoch, the sixth epoch, the Philadelphic, will be based on the Pentecost. It will be the object of every assault from the forces that try to accomplish other purposes. That was what Judith von Halle was talking about. A distraction. Protesting only against these measures and forgetting the idea of becoming aware of the second coming in the etheric and building, realizing this kingdom of, of, of the human kingdom is exactly what the, what, the, what the Antichrist forces are intending to do. And they've been doing a pretty good job at it too. To understand the events of the last great section of world history, it is necessary to know that the Pentecost spirit will continue to wrestle throughout the centuries, constantly engaged in combat with powers that wish to obscure and distort it. The great distraction. Thus, this is the fulfillment of the New Testament, in the same sense that the advent of Christ in a human body was the fulfillment of the Old Testament. That's how he began this chapter. This is because the mission of the New Testament event, the Christ event, is actually the cause of the new law to shine from within human beings. Christianity is really not a doctrine, but an event that will receive its full meaning once it has found a place not only on the arena of world history, but also within human hearts. Now this chapter ends with another, with the last one called the Pentecostal Revelation, the Apocalypse. And that leads on to the last part of this book, of which, of which Tom Beck said he was going to write 12, 12 studies on the Old Testament, because the original title was not Meditations, but Studies. But he never wrote 12 only wrote three and he didn't call them anthroposophical meditations anymore but spiritual scientific meditations very probably because of that disagreement that occurred between him and the then president of the society who said that Tomberg's work stood in his way can you imagine the president of the Dutch society at that time saying that this work stands in his way. After which Tomberg, the gentleman that he is, withdrew himself from the Anthroposophical Society. And this was just before the, the war began. And didn't finish these 12. But he, he went on speaking in, in a closed circle in Amsterdam. And we have uh, no, no, notes, manuscripts, uh, that can give a glance into what you uh, into what he wrote, and when I when I hope to publish my Dutch translations, I hope to give as an, an afterward some idea of what he Tomberg intended to write in these twelve chapters on the apocalypse. Now, with my excuses for the the overtime, I will uh, now end this. Uh, this reading for those who have uh, stayed with me uh, my 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 uh, sincere thanks i hope you you enjoyed the lecture that you you got some kind of idea some impulse to 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 further um, uh, 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 research do some more reading go to my um Go to my site, go to my, uh, not YouTube, but uh, Facebook site. I will, I will give you these links. Tomorrow I will give a, a lecture on the same topic, but different content. Uh, partly in Dutch, if you, if you know Dutch. Uh, 
uh, you can um, join me at 11 o'clock Amsterdam time, but in New York it'll be uh, you'll be sleeping. But in Asia you might be uh, you might be want to want to watch that if you're, if you're a Dutch speaking citizen. Okay, um, that was it. Thanks again for watching, and um, maybe to my next lecture, which may be around St. John, uh, the 21st of June.